They take what is unclear in scripture and they use that to interpret what is clear. Jesus is clear on hell. The scriptures are clear on hell. The apostles are clear. Church history is clear on the doctrine of hell. There is no universal Christian doctrine of hell, and the Bible is not clear on it either. There are actually three words that get translated as hell in the New Testament. Gehenna, which was a literal place outside of Jerusalem. Tartarus, which occurs once in 2 Peter 2, 4, and is where God sends sinful angels. And Hades, which is the Greek realm of the underworld, where according to Greek mythology, all people go when they die. Three words, three very different meanings, all get translated to hell in our English Bibles, which for most of us conjures up images of burning alive forever because you didn't accept Christ as your savior. While that is certainly one way to think about hell, there's also two other views which are held throughout the Christian tradition. Annihilationism, which says that those outside of Christ simply cease to exist, and universal reconciliation, which says that all people will be reconciled to their creator eventually because the love of God knows no bounds. A popular proof text used for this perspective is 1 Corinthians 15.22, which says, for as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. For many of us, hell was used as a scare tactic to get us to pray a prayer and sit under the authority of leaders who were incredibly toxic. But it turns out, when you take the Bible seriously, you start to see just how unclear your belief about the afterlife is. Paul never mentions hell, and the Hebrew Bible has no concept of burning in hell for all of eternity. Maybe that should tell us something. So I'm going to say that Christians take what is clear in Scripture and they make it be whatever the hell the culture of the day wants it to be because that is where all the identity and ideas of hell come from. Now, as I was talking on my live today, if you weren't on it, it's on Facebook and YouTube. On my live today, we talked about hell a little bit because we were talking about in 2025 going to Israel because there's one eye-opening thing when you go to Israel and realize how much the Bible is bullshit. But... One of the things that everybody who goes will be able to do is go to hell and back. Yep, I used to have a t-shirt because I went to Gehenna, it's a valley outside of Jerusalem. It's where they used to throw all the trash and all where all the, the lowest caste of society and the robbers and all those people would be. And there's a little valley with a little hillside with some graves. So I've been to hell, I came back. Been to Gehenna two times and came back. That is hell. That is what they were talking about. In the Jewish religion prior to, you won't find hell in the Old Testament because there was Sheol and everybody went into Sheol, which was the grave. And then you either, you went to annihilation, you ceased to exist. And that is where the idea of annihilation comes from, which is actually old Jewish teachings of ceasing to exist. And then that ceasing to exist also comes from the comedic teachings where if your heart was found to be heavier than a feather and after Horus advocates for you, to try to get you into Egyptian heaven. If Anubis and the judges decided that even Horus advocation for you taking on your sins doesn't work, then your heart is devoured, and devoured by, I believe, Sekhmet, but it might be wrong about which deity is supposed to devour your heart. And then you go to, to oblivion. So annihilation has always been a popular teaching that predates Christianity and predates Judaism. Now, as far as going to Tartarus, it is where bad angels go. According to your books in like in Revelations, well, first, according to Enoch, the devil was sent to, and his one third of the angels were sent to earth as a prison. So earth could be Tartarus. But then the other aspect of it is that in the book of Revelations, guess what? The beast and all his demons are sent to the lake of fire, Tartarus. That's the other time we're talking about where the angels go your book of revelation says nothing about the people who didn't believe in your god going to the lake of fire y'all just make that shit up to scare the shit out of people and as far as hades like my man said it's a greek tradition you see in the greek religion well, hold on i had to let the school bus go by in the greek religion it was taught that everybody went to hades to the underworld you didn't go up and live with the gods of course not you're just a mere human you went to hades and if you paid the man the boatman the two little coins then you know you get to go to the good side of hades otherwise you're tormented if you're poor and you don't have your coins that they lay over your eyes before you go into hades and so everybody went to hades that's what the greeks taught 
And then when the Romans took over because they was enamored by the Greeks, they added Hades to your Bible because then the Romans took over Christianity. And then, you know, you got Hades. So everybody goes to Hades, which is a different place than the hell that y'all have in your mind. The reason why you have the hell in your mind is because of Dante's Inferno. Dante, Dante's Inferno created your modern conceptions of hell with the devil with the, red, with the horns and the tail and it being red and all that sort of thing. And even had the different levels of hell and the different levels of heaven, which is why people had their different levels of heaven and their different levels of hell. And this was also adopted by the Muslims with their different levels of heaven and different levels of hell. But Dante created your hell. I guess he was divinely inspired for you to have that imagery in your mind. So when you watch these movies, you're saying, oh, that movie's so evil. It's made up, just like your ideas of hell is made up, right? Yeah. So, where does that leave us? That leaves us with the mere fact that your Jesus said that the kingdom of God is at hand, that heaven and hell is at hand. It's right before you. It's in front of you, and it's inside of you. But where would Jesus get that kind of teaching from if he ever actually existed? Or where would that kind of teaching come from? It's a hermetic alchemical teaching based on the law of correspondence, as above, so below, as within, so without. That everything that happens on the macrocosm happens on the microcosm. If you can imagine a heaven, then there is an imagination of a hell. And when you die, you go to whichever one your subconscious truly believes in. Just like as you live right now, and this is how the law of correspondence works, whatever is in the spiritual plane or next dimensional plane, you have in the matter plane. Right now, you want a job that you can't hate, that you hate. You got a spouse that's whooping your ass. You got bad ass kids. You're poor as shit. It seems like everything is going against you. You're out of shape. You feel bad. You go to the doctor. You got all kind of health problems. Guess what? You living in hell. But on the flip side of that, you got a loving spouse. You work and you have a job that you are happy to do, or you don't even work and you just got money. You're able to travel and live life and you know, go and enjoy every moment of life. Your kids are good. Oh, good, good kids who are not giving you a bunch of problems. Your family, extended family, everybody's just great. You're living in heaven. You're living in heaven. So if you can live in heaven or hell while you're here on earth, then ipso facto, and according to the law of correspondence, heaven, hell, after, regardless of where you go. It's all about how strong your mind is. And what you truly, truly believe. Not the bullshit that spews out your mouth that comes from the consciousness, your, your regular consciousness. But it's that subconscious brain that determines heaven or hell. That is why the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil are both at hand. So always remember, you got to free yourself and be yourself. Because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.